Well, good morning, APC. How are you doing this morning? Good. Happy Father's Day to all of you. We are so glad that you're here. We want to celebrate you this morning. And uh, we have something for you after at the back of the church. And we also we have a um, photo booth out there. We would love to see your families have pictures taken this morning. It's going to be great. We are so excited that you are with us this morning. We've got a great service planned. If you're watching from online, we want you to know that you're welcome to. And we are so glad that you're with us this morning. I hope you're enjoying your coffee in your pajamas, because that's what I would be doing if I was at home today, too. Well, would you stand with me this morning? We are going to head into a time of worship, but let's just pray for our service today. God, we just thank you so much that you are here. Father, we thank you that today is a new day, that your mercies are new every morning. And God, we enter your courts with thanksgiving in our hearts, and we enter your courts with praise. We want to meet with you this morning. Father, I just ask at the beginning of the service that you would bless each man that is in the room today. God, we recognize that sometimes these holidays are challenging and difficult. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would meet every man where they are at this morning, that you would bless each one in Jesus' name. That God, we know that you are a perfect father. We know that you are faithful. We know that you are good. And so God, I pray that you would just show us that a little bit more again this morning. In Jesus' name, amen. Are you ready to worship? All right, let's put our hands together. With my hands lifted to the sky, I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will dance in your kindness and claim every yes and amen. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. goodness forever again and again when it's all stripped away and it seems it's too late hope is buried and dead in the grave i'll speak your name i'll speak your name a song of thanksgiving is my battle cry with joy as my weapon Defy the lie of the dark with my hands lifted to the sky. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will dance in your kindness and claim every yes and amen. I will rejoice. Strength. I'll never stop, no, I'll never stop. 
nothing can stop my praise. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will dance in your kindness and claim every yes and amen. I will rejoice. I will rejoice. I will shout out. Shout of your goodness forever again and again. I will shout of your goodness forever again and again.
God, we thank you so much for your faithfulness this morning. God, we thank you that you are a God who does not change. You are the God who was, who is, and who is to come. We worship you this morning.
a second while the band continues to play. That sometimes in a week, does it not seem like sometimes an impossible feat to have a moment like this? So let's just be quiet for a couple minutes before the Lord. And if there's something on your heart that you just want to pour out to Him, whether it be worship, whether it be a request, whatever it is, would you just take the next couple of minutes and just pour your heart out before the Lord, just you and Him. pray right now, peace, your peace over each person in this room this morning. I pray your presence in a tangible way, that they would know that you are here, that you are the God who stands with them, that you are the God that goes before, you are beside us, you are behind us, that you cover us, that you envelop us, that is the God that we serve, and in the whisper you hear us. And even when we don't have the strength to utter a word, you know our hearts, you know our minds, and you meet us where we're at. And we thank you so much, God, for who you are and for your grace and your mercy to us. You are such a good God. You are so faithful. You are so gentle with us. You are a good any good? Amen. You guys can grab a seat. Wow, what a good day. How many of you are happy to be in church? All right, all right. With your right hand, can you raise it up? And then can you grab your connection card? <laughs> Do it for the person next to you. Do it for the person next to you. Um, we love connecting with you. We look at these connection cards every single week. It has been phenomenal, actually, putting people into positions of ministry, getting people involved. Um, we've been able to pray with people, connect with people, and that's the whole purpose of this connect card. As much as some of you might think it's irritating, it is a beautiful way for us as a pastoral staff to know who our congregation is and to be able to connect with you. And so thank you from the bottom of our hearts for filling this out each week. Um, we have a couple things coming up. And you know what? I put a picture up. Um, first, I want to, okay, I don't know which one comes first, Claudia. Um, we have a men's wing night coming up on Monday, June 19th, 8 p.m. at Montana's. If you love wings, if you love 
hanging out with friends and meeting new people. Um, Kathy said this morning, we sh the girls should have a wing night, and I'm totally down with that. So maybe when they're done, we'll, yes. When, when they're done, we'll book our own. We don't, whatever. You guys go have a good time. So that's Monday, June 19th. I threw in this picture. Yeah, I know, Claudia, you can do that. I threw in this picture because last week, Pastor Blair introduced our missions team and just talked a little bit about it. We have a team that is going to Honduras. They are leaving on June 30th, and this is our team. So you can see, hopefully you can see everybody who's in that picture. And um, so now that you've seen them, you can go, you can ask them questions and ask them what they're up to. And if you feel like you want to give financially to the work that they're going to be doing with Manos Extendidas Ministries, you can do that as well. And so I just wanted you to see who they were because I forgot last week. So that one's on me. All right, coming up June 25th, we're beginning three Sunday evenings of campfire nights. I love a good campfire. I love some good worship. We've got a great church property, and so we've decided to take advantage of it. So beginning, um, is, that, is that next Sunday? Yeah, it's next Sunday um, at six o'clock here on the back property. We are going to have a bonfire. We're going we're gonna to throw on some hot dogs. You guys can bring some snacks if you like. We're going to have some worship, some prayer, some activities, and it's going to be a super fun night. If, especially if you're new to the church, these events are the events that you want to get to know some new people. If you don't know people, this is a great way for you to get to know some people at APC, to make some new friends, and it's just a great night. Um, we also have, for those of you who are on our mailing list and you receive our newsletter, we have decided that we are going to have some printed copies at the welcome desk. And so if you would like to check out our newsletter and see the kinds of things that we put in it, and then maybe that will prompt you to sign up for uh, the newsletter, you can do that. They're on the welcome desk. And so you can ask Richmond back there, and he will make sure he gets one for you. Um, thank you so much for giving. Thank you for your generosity. Thank you for serving the Lord in this way. You can give... Um, by uh, e-transfer, you can give at the um, debit at the welcome desk. We also have a cash box that is kind of hanging on a on a post wall thing in the lobby. Um, you can find that there. You, there's a few different ways to give, but we just want to thank you because your generosity allows us to do what we do at APC, and so we are so blessed by it. Well, this morning we have kids going downstairs, but we also have junior highs, Impact. So if you are a part of Impact, if you are a part of kids, you guys can head downstairs with Pastor Christina and Pastor Aiden at this time. For the rest of you, it's your favorite time of the service. Would you stand up, find another section of the church, leave your section, and go say hi to somebody, meet somebody new, and we'll be back in just a few minutes.
courage and kindness, strength and gentleness, fortitude and tenderness, a father, a leader and a lifelong teacher, a comforter and a patient listener, a hero and a world changer, a gift from God above. Being a father is a high and holy calling. It is not only a blessing, but also a stewardship. Fatherhood is a precious opportunity and a divine responsibility because it is one of the many ways that God watches over all of us. A father is a protector and a provider, a hard worker and a family man, a role model and a faithful friend. And so from all of us to all of you, thank you to the fathers. Well, to all the fathers again, we say thank you and happy Father's Day. We hope that you have an awesome day and feel honored and thanked and inspired to keep on doing all that God is asking you to do to be a great dad. Today we have Father's Day because we celebrate the significant role that they play in all of our lives. The significance is so big, it's actually intimidating when I think about it. In fact, the first time I thought about it, it was very intimidating for me. Angela told me the news that we were going to have Isaac, and I could still remember that very clearly. And I tried to be a good husband, a dad in that moment that all the TV shows and movies told me to do is to smile and be happy that this is here. But my head started to freak out a little bit. <laughs> Can I be honest with that? It would be like my head started to be like, ah! what does that mean? What does that mean? And so uh, we smiled, we hugged, we celebrated, and then I could not sleep at all. (laughs) My head was just like racing and racing and racing and racing because you know how it is. If you're married, you get this. If you're a dad, you get this totally. If you're a mom, you get this absolutely. The idea is that when when you're single and in your 20s or you're in college, all of your money, all of your time, all of your hobbies, all of the things that you do, it's all about you. You know, all of all the way you have fun, this is all about you. You get to spend your own money and spend your own time, right? And then you meet the love of your life and you get married. And then it, at least that gets cut to half or maybe should get cut, cut to half, right? That you're going to share your time and your resources because it impacts the person next to you. But... But when children show up, you know what happens. You start to think about all that my wife requires, all that my kids require. And you're like, how much money and resources and time do I have? And you realize, I don't think after they get what they want, there'll be anything left. Like, this is the reality of it all. It was like, will there be anything left? Likely not, because this is what dads do. Put their wives and their kids first. They put them first. When I can think about what my dad looked like when I was in junior high and high school. I mean, at that time when I think about it, I thought he wore the strangest clothes. Like the strangest thing. Nothing was ever new. Everything was old and everything was ugly. I was like, Dad, you are, this is a sad, sad look. And so when I got, got, I got the news that, that, uh, that I was going to be a dad, and that, 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 picture in my mind comes to mind. It was like, do all dads have to look like this? You know, does, is this is what is required? Like, this is what kept me up all night. And what you realize this is that a great dad recognizes that my kids need it more than me. All of the style, all the new, all of the help, all of the finances and resources to help them become all that God has created them to be. So that It's an honor to have no style. 
<laughs> it's an honor to put them first. It's an honor to love our kids this way by putting this way. And this is actually why Angela has more style than me, because we just give it all to my kids and, and my wife. This is the mighty call of a dad to put our kids first. Psalm 127.3 says, Children are a gift from the Lord. They are a reward from Him. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to kind of discuss that a little bit about how our kids are reward. But let me reflect a little bit about what a reward they are. What a reward they are to us. And maybe you could celebrate that. When my kids started having their own thoughts, that was so much fun as a dad. You know, at the beginning, they don't say much. They don't do much. You're kind of like they're sleeping a lot. Carlos knows what that is. He's a big yawn right there, like, because he's been up all night. I, I get that. And, and the babies don't do anything. But when your kids start having their own thoughts, they're super entertaining. We would just say, Isaac, Isaac, why don't you stand up on the ottoman there and just tell us a story? And just be amazed at what words would come out of him. And you're like, I could not. It was like, how can I keep them talking? It was so entertaining. And, and I'm sure you've been there. When, when this, another awesome moment as a dad is when my kids discovered their own talents. When they discovered a gift. When they discovered something, their own ability. When, like, for instance, I have secret video that Michaela has sworn I'm never allowed to show, so I can't show it today. But when Michaela wrote her first song, Angie and I kind of looked at each other back and forth. It was like, are we just being those parents about, like, they think their kids are awesome and great at everything? Or, or was legitimately that awesome? <laughs> was that so fantastic? And it actually is. It actually was. And she's recorded and done her own songs. It's amazing when your kids discover their talents and their passions, like something leaps, that's a reward inside you. When my kids connect with God, I can remember when Michaela coming home because uh, we were at a campground and we had a cottage there and Michaela came home kind of crying, kind of overwhelmed, kind of like freaking out a little bit because, because when she prayed, she heard God speak to her and she didn't know what to do with it. She didn't know what to do with it. I mean, you just pause and cry because that couldn't be so much more exciting as parents and dads. Uh, it's amazing. When our kids overcame something difficult, oh, isn't that great? When they overcame some, some struggle, maybe it was a fight with a friend, and they were like, why doesn't people like me? And they, and they grow through character beyond that. Like, that is such a win for parents. It's such a win for parents. Or when your kids are brave, even if it's for, like, learning how to apply for a job or, or try something brand new and not get intimidated by it. When your kids do something brave, you feel like you won, but they won, right? You feel like you won when they won. And this is what it is to know that there's a reward. There is a reward from God because of our kids. And so why don't you take a moment, take, take, just give you a short time, two, three minutes tops, real quick with the people that are sitting around. It's like, how do you know that kids are reward from God? Can you go there? Even if you're talking to your mom about yourself, that'd be fun, okay? So circle up and go, I know that kids are reward because, and fill in the blank, go ahead and do that. And if you're sitting by yourself, group up with somebody. Don't, don't discuss alone.
That's good. It's good to be reminded about the reward of kids. I love it. I love how you're going to help me preach, and uh, I'm going to have a couple of guests in just a minute or so also help me with some practical ideas today to honor dads and to be intentional parents. So important to be a godly father. Let me give you some examples. It's so important to be a godly father. Dads are examples of how we live in the world. It's good that a, a child looks up to their dad and say, I want to be like you. I want to be like you and how you think and how you work and how you treat others and how you love their wives and how they give an example of generosity and pursue the things of God. It's good that a, parent, a, a child looks up at their dad and says, I want to grow up to be like you, to be in a good example. Dads are also expanders of our horizons. Nothing can inspire, I think, when, then, when a father says, you can do it, and I believe in you. It expands the horizon and destiny to say, what is possible in a child's mind is so grown when a father says, you can do it, and you can accomplish all kinds of things. Let's do this together. Horizons in school or sports or work or purpose or face their fears and challenge them to do great things. That's what dads can do, expand a kid's kind of excitement and faith and hope in the future of their kids. Dads are also extenders of their heritage. It's not just the last name, but there's a, a legacy that's kind of instilled in our DNA to increase the good things and to keep them moving forward. Both of my grandfathers are hardworking and adventurous type. And so my great-grandfather came from Sweden and, uh, and came to this country. Also, my grandfather on the other side left Newfoundland when it wasn't part of Canada to come to Canada and be a part of this new generation. They were ready to move forward and go on to whatever God had them. It's an extenders of our heritage. They say, we're going to work hard and believe in a better future and have hope. And dads are also an expression of our heavenly father. And this is one of the most powerful aspects of being a father. Because we understand from the creation story that God made us in his image. Very specifically, Genesis 1 says, God made us male and female in his image, in his likeness. And for that, we are sacred. We are sacred because God made us with such intentionality to be like him. And therefore, who and when we create other life also matters to God and is also sacred to God. So we celebrate that together, that when, because God made us in his image, we reflect who God is. 2 Corinthians 3.18 has a powerful passage that applies to dads, but applies really to all of us. So it says this, so all of us who have that veil removed can see and reflect the glory of God. And the Lord, who is the Spirit, makes us more and more like him as we are changed into his glorious image. What an important verse. What a goal for dads to be is to say, God, I want you to remove that veil from my heart, from my eyes, from my life. Help me to spend time with you in such a way that I become more and more like you. This is the call of a dad. In the Old Testament, Moses would wear a veil after he spent time with God. He spent time with God and his face glowed. It was so bright that the Israelites were like, listen, can you, can you put something in between us and you? Can you put something, can you kind of block that? That kind of intimidates us. That kind of makes us afraid a little bit. Can you block that away? But, but Paul is speaking to the church in Corinth and to say that veil represents the old covenant, the Old Testament, the old agreement with God. And Jesus, because of his death and resurrection, has removed that veil that we can get to know God personally. We get to, to know God and be with God and experience God personally, both to know him in our minds and know him in our hearts. I just love this passage where Jesus says, this is what eternal life is is to know the Father and to know Jesus. This is our calling. And next week, I'm going to preach a little bit more about that specifically. But here this passage is, is from Paul to Corinth. He says, for all of you who have come to know the truth of who Jesus is, that veil is torn down. And you don't need to hide the fact that you have been with God. 
You don't need to hide that from your coworkers or your family members or friends. That he encourages us to get rid of that veil and be with God and let other people know that you've been with God. That we can reflect the presence of God specifically to our kids. This is why we are created to reflect Jesus. And therein lies the challenge and opportunity for us as dads. Well, everyone as well. But we get to reflect the image of God to our children. Who God is, his grace, his mercy, his patience, his understanding. We get to reflect that to our kids every day that we are with them. So whether a child needs a hug or a listening ear, or in that moment when we say they've done an awesome job, well done, or when your kid needs a good laugh and just someone to celebrate and have a blast with, and when our kids come to us with their heads hung low, maybe because they know that they have failed our loving standard or perhaps they've even failed their own standard and they come before them, they need grace, they need understanding, and we get to reflect the image of God to our children in those moments. What a powerful way to do it. What, a, what an important calling as a dad. Today, there, there are thousands and thousands and thousands of parenting books that actually come out each and every day. Can you believe that? How to stay up on excellent parenting has almost seemed impossible. George Barna wrote a book called Intentional Parenting, intentional parenting. And he was like, when I looked at through all of these different books, there's so many books that just kind of talk about parenting by default. Just, just see what everybody else is doing in our society, in our community. See what they're up to and then just kind of follow suit. That that's one way of parenting. Another t- kind of parenting that he identified was experimental parenting. That you're going to try this by trial and error. It's like, I'll see what works one day and then try something else the next and just kind of skip my way along, kind of hoping, kind of taking what, what happened with me and I'll just sort of try to reapply it and just kind of hope for the best. That there is also experimental parenting. But he says, what's something better is this intentional parenting. That the goal of such child rearing is to raise a child to make their faith in God the highest priority in their life. That throughout Scripture, Jesus encourages us to chase after Him and to reflect His image to our children so that they can understand what, what they want is that the highest priority of their life is a relationship with God. So intentional parenting. How do you do that? How do, how do you live in that moment? Well, I've asked a couple of dads to kind of help me out this morning, kind of share. I think they're great dads. Uh, not perfect dads, just because somebody comes up here on the mic, don't assume that my, if my life is perfection or their lives are perfection. But I have seen the intentionality already in their lives, and so I've invited them to come forward to just, just kind of describe those moments. How do you be intentional? And if you failed, how... How do you move on past that? So I'm going to invite John Graham and uh, Muthana, to, uh, Muthana to come on up. Why don't you welcome them as they come? Oh, Muthana's even bringing, bringing a child with him. That's awesome. Good. And so uh, I want to make sure I just grab this mic off the front there. Is this one good to go? Awesome. And so uh, we'll put you guys on the same side there and give John the mic. Awesome. This way. This is great. So... John, tell us a little bit, intentional parenting, you know, and your, your child is here in the room, so yeah. this, is, this is so accountable, this Pre- is great. The pressure is on for yeah, sure. Yeah, that's great, yeah. Um, I kind of thought about this uh, when Pastor was talking about it, uh, and I mean, I think you nailed it on the head, really, when I, I look back at my, my own dad, and my dad was not a Christian until the day he actually died. But my dad was a disciplinarian. He was in the Air Force, uh, and he was very hard in regards to his men and those type of things. And when he w- I was young, he was very, very disciplined, and he made sure that I had everything in line and everything else. But as I got older, I saw a change in him, and he became actually very lighthearted. Hmm. And I'd sit down with my dad when I was a teenager, and I'd see this smirk on his face. And it was like I can, he, he could identify with what I was going through and who I was. And it was that 
that I saw when I came to Christ, it came later on in my years, that was what I saw God as. Mm. God's not out of shape because of the things that I do or don't do. I can see God sitting there with a little smirk on his face going, that's my boy. You know, or saying, you know, the thing is with God, he's always positive. Because he says, well done, or he says, we'll get there. But it's never, you idiot, or you, well. <laughs> there's a few times where I've been slapped upside the head, I feel. But you know what? It's all good. And that's the way I want to be with my kids. I want to go to them, and I want to be lighthearted. Because there's so many things in this world that put such a pressure on us to be yeah. so serious. Yeah. And sometimes we need to just lighten up. And, and I mean, my daughter and my son-in-law are prime examples of that. Lindsay is out of her mind crazy, and she's got that, <laughs> she's got that really strange sense of humor. And the thing is, is Jordan just loves her for who she is. And I love it. I love that's it. That's awesome. And that's how I see it. That's how I want a parent. And my yeah. grandkids are, I mean, my dad, who was this man who was so solid and stuff, playing with his grandkids like a little boy. And that's how I want to be with my grandkids, too, because there's always something positive to say to them, yeah. not negative. Yeah. That's what I want to be with them. So good. So like, before I take away the, yeah. the mic, it's like, what happens in those moments that you're like, I was trying to be lighthearted, and I think I came in a little heavy-handed. Like, how do you handle that in yourself and in them? I give them money. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Money speaks louder than well, words. Yes. Know, especially for Lindsay. You know, it's like, <laughs> dead. I, you know what? It's just the one thing that we always have to be, try to be. And, I mean, my wife will tell you I have a hard time with it. Just being humble enough to say I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. You know what? I messed up. I, I yeah. blew it. Yeah. And just forgive me. And yeah. if you don't forgive me, it's your problem. <laughs> But you're trying to be lighthearted with yourself I, I, that's right. and gracious for yourself. So you're the, you're the example to yourself as well as to them. Yeah, even when you're... that's how I, you know, I, I'm very hard on myself about things. Awesome. And yeah. I just love yeah. our God who's yeah. on my side. And he just, yeah. like I said, he's always like, got we'll that smirk there. on his face when it comes to we'll me. We'll get so. there. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, that's so great. All right, uh, Muthana, come on up forward. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Tell us who you brought up. Uh, this is Alan, and he decided to join us uh, over here. Yeah, I, I, I like the word trying, because um, uh, we, we're really trying. Um, working uh, all week and uh, have to go back home and, and be a normal person and uh, um, reflect, reflecting God image really uh, involve uh, modeling God's character and, and, and values in our daily uh, lives yeah. um, as well as uh, we're trying to teach them uh, God's love and truth uh, through scripture Bible stories uh, yeah what suits their age of course uh, yeah. and uh, um, yeah so uh, we have some practical ways to uh, uh, to demonstrate uh, um, God's character by uh, demonstrating love to them and to others as well, um, um, uh, even in a difficult uh, situations. Mm -hmm. um, also, uh, prioritizing some um, prayer time and uh, um, and and uh, devo uh, devotional time with uh, with the kids. Um, be honest always with them in yeah. words and uh, yeah. in action. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so uh, it's a it's a journey. It is a journey. It's, it's a journey. It's a, it's a work in progress. It's, a, yeah. uh, um, it's lifelong uh, yeah. process yeah. that required really intentionality, yeah. uh, consistency, yeah. Uh, grace, and a lot of patience. That's good. Uh, I loved uh, Muthana and Rafida were a part of our home group, and they were like, to make this work, can we bring our kids? You know, how chaotic will be. We're like, forget the chaos, just bring the kids. Yeah. And I loved it because you, put, you made a priority in, in this moment to go, like, let's work on ourselves, let's work on our relationship with God in front of the kids. 
So sometimes we, we, we have our devotional moments, we have our prayer times, and we kind of go into our closets away. But in this situation, you're like, come on over. And then when they got tired of the Lego, the kids just sort of joined our circle, and they were quiet enough to listen to mom and dad share and cry and pray. I just thought that was so intentional that you did that in front of them, in front of them, and said, it's not just the, the actions of which that they're going off to, but they could see it and hear it uh, and believe it. And uh, anyway, so I, I think you guys are doing an awesome job that way. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Right? Just, yeah. Uh, what, what do you do yeah. when you feel like you, you don't hit your own standard in front of your kids? Uh, yeah, well, well we, uh, as a parents, we, we all fall short and uh, yeah. we do mistakes. Uh, um, for me, the, the most important part is to acknowledge those mistakes. Yeah. Um, uh, like John mentioned, that we have to uh, seek forgiveness from God and yeah. uh, and from our children as well, yeah. and perhaps to take an opportunity. Uh, you you say I'm sorry to your kids? Uh, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> like that's huge. That's so yeah. big. That yeah, is yeah. so awesome to do and recognize. Honestly. Well, uh, we um, we. I also think about it like uh, taking this as an opportunity to model humility and yeah. uh, vulnerability it as is. well to our kids. Yeah. And uh, to show them that, and also to make a commitment to, uh, uh, um, to do better in the future. Awesome. Um, show them that, uh, um, that this, is, uh, this, is, this is okay to yeah. make a mistake and yeah. to amend, um, make so amendment okay. like in the, in, the, uh, um, in the future when we fall short. So important. Yeah. So important. Thank you for sharing. Would you thank Ruthanna as well for coming up? Awesome. Hey, bud. <laughs> Brave to come forward. It's so essential that we're honest and reflecting and have that intentionality in our minds. How can I represent God to my kids? Abraham is considered to be the father of our Christian faith. And he kind of echoes this kind of lifestyle that we can read in Genesis 18, verse 19. What a beautiful kind of statement that's made over Abraham that I think as dads, we can reflect on, and as fathers, we can reflect on. And, but to, before Genesis 18, 19 is, is there, let, let me walk you through this. Genesis 12, we read that God calls Abraham at the age of 75 to leave his country, to leave his people, to leave his father's house, to go to a new land. And God calls and promises Abraham that he will be a great nation, a great blessing, to have a great name. That begins all the way at his age of 75. A few chapters later in Genesis 15, God continues to remind Abraham about the promises he made, that God likes to repeat his promises to his children, that he promises of his love and, and, and blessing still to come. And we can do that as dads as well, but God continues to reflect this way and he says that your descendants are going to be as big as the stars in the sky and the sand on the seashore. This is so many people. So it's Genesis 12 and then Genesis 15 and then Genesis 17. Abraham is now 99. It's been 24 years later. And God echoes again. God echoes again to Abraham, now through the covenant of circumcision. And God changes his name from Abram to Abraham and his wife Sarai to Sarah. And God promises Abram that he'll have a son in a year's time and that he will be called Isaac, which is a great name. And I recommend all future kids to name their kids named Isaac. And it means to have great laughter and, and names do come true because Isaac's laugh is, is fantastic. But I love it how God repeats his promises, repeats his promises, and plans ahead and speaks forward in hope and faith. And so Genesis 18 comes, and the Lord appears to Abraham in the form of three men. And Abraham hurries to greet them and spend time with him and, and to give them water, rest, and food, and shade. And the men ask where Sarah is, and and, uh, and she's listening in the distance. She's like, she's going to have a child in a year's time. And she laughs. And they're questioning on her laughter. And she says to herself, how amazing is this? How will I have this pleasure of having a child? Is anything too difficult for the Lord? This amazing promise of our kids, this amazing hope in God's plans, God's amazing promises. 
This is what we sing about every single week. This is what we worship and remind ourselves about. It's God's promises that we, we build our lives upon, that he is faithful towards his promises. And we see this echoed in Abraham today. And so in verse 16 through 18, the men that represent God got up to leave and they looked down towards Sodom and Abraham walked alongside them along the way and the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I'm about to do? Abraham will surely become a great and powerful nation and all nations on the earth will be blessed through him. Just pausing in the significance, because we're going to get to verse 19, but the, the verses that lead up speak of God being so intentional, so hopeful, so ready to be faithful to his promises to do great things, that he has told the promises again and again and again and again. And so when you hear God's promises today over dad's life and our kids' lives and our family, Lord, this is to be encouraging. This is to be hopeful. This is to be um, exciting in your life about what God is going to do. Because he says again, surely Abraham will be a great and powerful nation and all the world will be blessed through him. Genesis 19. For I, God, have chosen Abraham so that he will direct his children, so that he will direct his children and his household after him to keep the way of the Lord by doing what is right and just, so that the Lord will bring about for Abraham what he promised him. What a powerful few lines of scripture that as a dad, I just want to read over my life and read over my life and read over my life. That there's so many things in here that are worthy of our attention and focus. If to wake up and think about my kids and to pray about my kids and to, and to think of a comment like this that's said over Abraham that I could reflect of Abraham, that I could reflect of God. is like, make me this kind of dad that can reflect God and who he is all in such a short verse. The picture portrays that God gives us an image of dedication, saying that Abraham was dedicated before God. God dedicated him. He says, I have chosen him. God has chosen Abraham, and I believe that God has chosen you dads to be the father of your kids. God has chosen this, that he was like, who should be the dad of Isaac and Michaela? And that kind of sobering excitement, like the chosen fact that we are chosen by God to have these kids at this time. What a privilege, what an honor, what a sobering reality, what an exciting moment that this was done intentionally. And we know that Abraham had to make tough choices to follow God and that we have to make tough choices as well to follow God, to live a life in front of your kids that says, I choose to follow God and all of his ways. So as we receive this dedication, it mirrors to our children commitment. As we commit ourselves to God, our kids will receive that commitment as well. So God gives us an image of dedication that leads towards commitment. Another thing that comes up here as well, that God gives us an image of direction, that he will direct his children and his household, and that our kids will look for direction from ourselves as well. That the kids look towards their dads and their moms and say, what's the wise thing that I should do? Whether it's buying a car or a house or dating this person or that person, whether it's a school or career, they want to hear, is this the right path? Is this the right path? Is this the wise thing to do? So we give our kids direction and that, how important that is to follow God. And when we give them direction, they can mirror purpose. They can discover the purpose of their life, that this is all done with intentionality as well from God. God also gives us an image of discipline to keep the way of the Lord, which simply means, I believe, is to stay close to God, a desire in our hearts to discipline ourselves, to stay close to God, that I believe our kids should see us pray and see us worship and see us give and, and be generous, to see us serve and to honor other people. And have a heart that says, I want to be in the presence of God. I want to know God more. That as we pursue God, 
I know that our kids could say, that's how it's done. That's what it's done. That's what that is like. And that heart can be in them when we discipline ourselves this way, that God helps us and them with our self-control. God also gives us an image here of dignity, of doing what is right and just. In a time where we're not sure what is right and what is just, what does it take that we believe that our kids could be raised to be courageous kids, to say, let's do what needs to be done, even if it's not the popular thing, and even if it comes with this personal sacrifice. When our fathers reflect dignity, our kids grow to self-worth. When God gives us also an image of dependence, so that God, the Lord will bring about, we don't do these things on our own. We don't. God helps us each and every day to be the dads, the parents that we need to give our kids this environment where they can learn what trust is. When we depend on God and trust in God in all of his ways, our kids can learn trust as well. And finally, God gives us an image of destiny. For Abraham, what he promised would come to pass. Because we walk by faith and not by sight. And so dads, we teach only what we live out. To the dads that are in the room, we honor you and love you and encourage you today to live out your life of faith in front of your kids. Encourage them, inspire them, hug them and hold them. Talk to them and forgive them. These words are the most powerful force in their life. So speak life and speak hope and speak love and redemption. And this will give them an opportunity to have hope in their own lives. This past year, we've been talking about love does, and it echoes from a book about we could just love wherever we are and just being in the moment. I can absolutely account in my life that as a, as a dad of kids that were be under the age of five, if I did anything else at the same time as be with my kids, I was an absolute failure. If I try to watch my kids and do a little bit of work, collapse. If I try to watch my kids and do some yard work, collapse. Every moment like that ever happens. So just being in the moment and loving. I, I love how Bob kind of brings up how we can just be loving wherever and however we can in the moment. He also shares a moment about his dad in his book, um, Everybody Always, and how we just love everyone always. And so he's reflecting on every time he visited his dad, he'd, he'd drive this terrible car, and uh, he would always seem to get, forget and never get around to the oil change. So his dad was repeatedly telling him, hey, you need to get that oil change in that truck. But he'd forget, and he'd get lazy with it. He'd visit his dad, and his dad would say, hey, you do that oil change yet? <laughs> and he would say, ah, yeah, 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 I'll do it tomorrow. But it happened was the opposite effect. I'm sure the dad was trying to intentionally, he was like, I'm trying to help you, son. I'm trying to encourage you. I'm trying to, you know, teach you how to do something right. I'm trying to direct your path. So this is how to take care of, care of it. But Bob reflects to say that, you know what? It actually had the opposite effect on himself, that the more he was told to oil change, the least he, the least he wanted to change the oil in his truck. And this could happen for dads. I can reflect on this way, that it becomes so easy to be like, I'll be the reminding guy, and the, the, which slips into the nitpicking guy. The, I want to be the encouraging guy, but now it's turning into the telling, telling him guy. And we can, we can do this, we try in subtle ways, and maybe manipulative ways, and strong ways, and loud ways sometimes, to, to really kind of, kind of push our kids to do what we think is right for them. The trouble is that I don't like to be told to do that, and neither do my kids. I don't like to be told what I want to do, and neither do they. And so there's this moment that even if they should follow in line, they're not really learning it on their own. What they're learning is compliance. And the problem with compliance is that it turns our kids into actors rather than making decisions for themselves. They read the lines of the script that someone told them to say, and we sacrifice the ability to discover, sometimes even faith, on their own. So here's the problem. When we make ourselves the sheriffs of our kids' behavior, we risk having the approval become more important than Jesus' love. Let me say that again. When we make ourselves the sheriffs of our kids' behavior, we risk having our our approval 
become more to them than Jesus' love. But good news that there's a fix for this. Instead of telling our kids what they want or should do, we need to tell them who they are. This works every time. We all become. Our kids become, I become, we all become who the people who love us the most say we are. We always become who the people love us the most say we are. So we need to tell our kids who they are. We reflect what God is telling us, who loves us the most, who we are. We listen to God and we reflect that towards our kids and say, this is who God tells us you are, that you are loved, you are special, you are unique, you are built with significance and purpose. You can make great decisions, you can make a difference. We are proud of you and we believe in you and you have a sense of destiny on your Life, and I get to watch that up front, front row, and to celebrate with them. This is the privilege and honor as parents and as dads today that we get to tell our kids what God really thinks of them. And it's so amazing to do so. In just a moment, I'm going to pray. But I'd love you to also pray. So I'm going to pray and then give you a moment to pray, perhaps in those circles that you're already in. And just take a moment to pray over our kids because honestly, how important is the next generation to us? So important, extremely important, even just to ask them that day, how important is the next generation to us as a church, to us as parents, to us as family? So vitally important that we want to live our lives by our words, values, and actions, as Pastor Aiden preached about last week, in such a way that following Jesus will be the most natural thing to them. Would you bow your heads with me this morning? Lord, we thank you that our kids are a reward. They really, really are. Lord, there is so much joy in life we as parents get from being around our kids when they're small and it's difficult and there seems to be no, not enough uh, hours in the day to sleep, Lord, they are still a gift. Lord, and to watch them discover their gifts and their talents and their purpose in life, Lord, we get to watch that, Lord. But even when they move out, for many of us here have kids that are moving out, Lord, the parenting isn't over, parenting isn't done. It's a part of the journey, Lord, we still get to be parents Lord, to be an example to them by words and values and actions. Lord, to encourage them to follow you, to follow you and all that they do. Lord, so we lift up our kids. We lift up our families. We lift up the dads today and say, God, would you shape us to be people that reflect your image, to reflect who you are so that our kids can know you I know the life that they've created for you as well in your name. Amen. Amen. And now, so just a couple of minutes, yourselves, turn to the person. Maybe it's just in twos and take a moment to pray over kids. I know there's many in the room that would love to take a moment to pray for those kids before we finish up today. I'll give you a moment to do that. Go ahead.
Well, thank you again for taking that time to pray. There's lots of different needs that are in the room when it comes to families and kids and where they are, and lots of, lots of important requests that we'll continue to pray for. So if you have a prayer request for your kids that you'd like to mention on that Connect card, I really encourage you to do so uh, to me as well. And so when you finish with that Connect card on the way out, you can put it among the baskets. And if you're brand new with us today, they filled that Connect card out, we'd love to say thanks so much for joining us. You can give that gift, uh, that card to someone at the welcome desk, and they will give you just a little gift saying thanks for joining us. We're so glad that you did that and just say hello that way. We also, again, have a, a, just a, a prayer moment as well, that if you're here and you would like one of our prayer team or myself to pray for you, we just kind of meet over here at the front, no matter what is going on in your heart and your life. Maybe it's to do with this morning's message. Maybe it's not. Anything in your life, we'd love to take some time to pray for you. So God bless. Have a great rest of your day. Dads, have a blast. I know that I'm going to Canada's Wonderland and watching a Batman movie, so my day is set. Hanging out with the kids, doing that, and uh, we'll see you again next Sunday. God bless. It's a joke.